Good morning, church. Happy Lord's Day, everyone. It's good to be here. Uh, like what David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. We worship our Lord, our God, in spirit and in truth. And welcome, everyone, to our worship this morning. Once again, uh, uh, welcome to our worship this morning. And um, for all of those uh, brothers and sisters who are at home and still are on our Zoom platform, together we have the unity in heart and in mind to worship and praise our living God in truth and spirit. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to bring to you this morning a portion of God's word and the lesson that we could get from his words for our blessings for our encouragement and edification. Uh, I would like to thank Brother Rex for creating uh, and providing us our bulletin every Sunday. Always a great encouragement uh, of the topics that he presents to us. And likewise for Brother Marcus for uh, setting up the presentation. We would like to thank you for all the things that you do, dear brothers. Great job. Uh, and if you will take a look at our bulletin, we have a number of prayer requests. For uh, We are praying for each other. We are praying for all our needs. We are praying for our family. We are praying for our children. We are praying for our church. And uh, we pray for everything. And we believe with the goodness and the will of our God, most of our prayers and requests are being answered, either instantly or in a way how God answers prayers using other people. Like a brother or a sister one time will send you a text message or uh, a song on YouTube. And uh, right away you'll get lifted up because that is the right time and the right uh, message that you are waiting for so for us that is an answered prayer and um, just to remind you in our worship service do you know that we come to the lord in prayer basically six times one for the opening two for the communion one for the offering a prayer before the message Thank you very much, Brother Tad. And uh, one for the closing prayer. And if we are going to include the songs that we sing, which are considered prayers, right now we're only singing three songs. So that's another three prayers. And if we're going to go on a regular basis, we're going to be singing another five songs. So that's another five prayers. So all in all, basically, we got... 10 prayers in our worship service. Why? Because we need to come to our Lord with thanksgiving for guidance and direction. And because there are so many blessings and thanksgiving that we have to acknowledge from our God that we worship. And we trust and believe that our prayers are being heard every, every time that we come to his throne of grace. So this morning, we will highlight a statement of our Lord Jesus Christ. A simple lesson, and yet so vital and powerful. I can't wait to share it with you. Taken from the book of Luke 11, 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. Thank you very much, Brother Ryan, for reading the scripture this morning. Likewise, Brother Carlos, for the... Great message on the song before the message. Everything to God in prayer. So Jesus says, So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. 
an in-depth look at Jesus' command on asking, seeking, and knocking. A person in a difficult situation or in a distress, especially if it is a circumstance of life and death, it is human instinct to seek help from a supernatural being. For even people without really practicing a certain faith or have not really offered any spiritual prayer, they are like children crying in the dark with painful longing for help from somewhere or someone. Or like the soul in deep sorrow cries to some supreme being for help. No one has ever been more ready to pray in time of trouble than those who didn't believe that prayer works, especially in their days of peace and prosperity. A Christian journal was found some time ago and was written in it about a man on board a ship boasting about his atheism, the disbelief or lack of belief of the existence of God. Then a strong storm came up in the middle of their journey and to his great fear of dying, he fell on his knees and confessed to the chaplain of the ship that he had been an atheist and he never believed until the day until that day that there was a god his atheism vanished and in his fear of death he cried to god to have mercy on him in the creation God has given all animals he created some special form of strength. One has the ability to run very fast when being chased by a predator. Another with a great horn that pushes down his enemy. And the other with tooth and claw that tears his adversary to pieces. To man, he gave only a little strength compared with the animals among which he placed in the Garden of Eden. And yet, man has dominion over everything because the Lord was his strength. As long as he knew where to look for the source of his power, man remained unbeatable and unchallenged king of all those around him. That image of God which was evident in his life sustained his sovereignty over all creation. But then the unfortunate happened when man, because of his free will, had chosen to disobey God. Depravity took place in the heart of man and fell into temptation. As a result, being thrown away outside the realm of paradise. But through man's instinct, he still has a memory of what he was and remembered to find his strength when in distress. Man knew that there is something in prayer. Like when he is thirsty, water is there to quench his thirst. When he is hungry, there is food for the appetite. So when God commanded man to pray, it is because prayer has a corresponding blessing connected to it. God would not ask us to do something without any good reason behind it. We will find a powerful reason for expecting prayers to be effective because it is an institution of God. God established prayer. In the, in the Bible, we are over and over again commanded to pray. Since we as believers of God, as our creator, our infinitely wise and awesome God, he would not give us instructions that are ineffective or foolish. He said, I say to you, 
I, your teacher, your master, your Lord, your Savior, your God, say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. And then with a promise, for everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. There are some people who argued against prayer saying, it is not possible that prayers could be answered for the law of nature cannot be altered. And they must and will go on whether man prays or not. Are they forgetting that our God can make miracles? He made them before and can make them again. Though it is not part of the Christian faith that God must work miracles in order to answer the prayers of his servants. A lesson learned when Jesus told his disciples, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. A man, in order to fulfill a, plan, a promise, has to rearrange all his affairs to stop certain processes. Or stop certain processes, proving only that he is a man. Limited his wisdom and power. But our God is able. Our God, who is omnipotent, all-powerful, that he can make results similar to miracles without suspending anyone or anything of his loss. Didn't he stop the, moon, the sun and the moon when Joshua prayed to the Lord so that they could continue fighting the Amorites, thereby defeating them and winning the victory? 1 Samuel 1, 10 and 20. In deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And God granted her plea. 1 Samuel 30, 8. David inquired to the Lord. And the Lord gave back to David that was taken from his enemies. Taken by his enemies. Acts 16, 25 and 27. Paul and Silas in prison in Rome. They were praying and singing hymns. Suddenly foundations were shaken and the gates were opened. Zechariah. He prayed for a son. Luke 1, 13 to 14. John the baptizer is conceived. As did the disciples pray for boldness. The book of Acts 4, 31. They prayed for boldness and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. These are answered prayers that we can see at the Bible. In the Bible. When was the last time that you asked God for something and He delivered? For me, it was a while ago, somewhere away here. We were running. I didn't want to be late because I have to set up everything, but I said, God, please make all these lights green. <laughs> he did. <laughs> we were five minutes early. Simple as that. Just last night, I prayed that the Lord wake me up and with your will, I'll wake up in the morning so that I could come to the building with my brothers and sisters so that we could worship together. He did. And with thanksgiving, I praise God for his goodness and his faithfulness. Our Lord is the sustainer of everything. 
and therefore is in total control of the motions of forces in the world. And if he says, ask, and it will be given to you, he does not speak in ignorance, but knows what he declared. We may be assured that there are no forces which can prevent the declarations of the Lord's own word. From him being the creator and the sustainer, the word I say to you settles all controversy forever. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. First John 5, 14 and 15. This, is a, this much is certain. If you, who are believers, cannot believe in the effectiveness of prayer based on the words of Christ, then I find it kind of strange. For you are leaning all your soul's weight on Jesus. If you can trust the Lord with your soul, you must of necessity trust him with your prayers as for the assurance we have from Jesus our Lord presents us with a promise for everyone who asks receives he who seeks finds and to him who knocks at the door will be open Ask means requesting for something. Seek means to endeavor to find a thing, to try to gain it, to strive after it with earnestness and zeal. Knock is a request for admission when the way is closed. Jesus is telling us here that when we are searching for an answer or solution to a problem, we should actively exert effort to resolve the difficulty. He presents three different forms of seeking things. And each pictures different intensities of effort. Asking is for what is wanted. It often, it often re requires humility. Seeking is diligently for it. Sincerity and drive are the key here. And knocking on doors to gain entrance, this means being persistent, persevering, and occasionally going an extra mile for asking. Now observe these three varieties of prayers are put on an ascending scale. It is first said that we ask, which refers to the prayer which is a mere statement of our needs. We tell the Lord that we want this and that and ask Him with humility to grant it. But as we learn the art of prayer, we go on further to seek, which we plead our reasons for granting our desires and we begin to wrestle with God for the mercies needed. And if the blessings do not come soon in time, we then go to the next degree, which is knocking. We become demanding. We are not content in asking and giving reasons anymore, but we express a deep sincerity and seriousness into our request. So, our prayers grow from asking, which is the statement, to seeking which is the pleading and reasoning, and to knocking, which is the urgent persistent in the request. Take note. If everyone could ask, but not everyone has the courage to seek. And if so, how much more is someone to go further into knocking? 
Asking is easy. Even babies, before they could talk, they already know how to ask. To seek is to search for. And it's not a hard task to do, but without effort of seeking or searching, it will be impossible to find what you're looking for. Even David prayed on Psalm 63, 1. He said, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Book of Jeremiah 29, 13. God said, you will seek me and you will find me when you search me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. But you, will you agree with me that seeking is a little bit harder than asking and knocking? Especially when you are not looking. Where are you? Where you, you're not really looking. I mean, maybe not hard enough. We need light to see. If we are seeking but still in darkness, how are we be able to find what we're looking for? I still remember what Brother Charles preached us one time about finding the light. That sometimes. Our eyes are open and we try to seek God's answer to our prayers. But because of the cloud and the darkness that surrounds us, we cannot really see how God is working within us. John 8, 12 says, I am the light, said Jesus. Whoever follows me will not, work in dark, will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And how do we get enlightened? From reading and studying God's Word, our Bible. All is laid out for us in the Bible. Everything. In what manner? Search with all your heart and with all your soul. How about knocking? Jesus presented this to his disciples. Luke 11, 5, 8 said, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, let me have three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, Jesus said, though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. How do you think his friend asked for what he needed, especially when he heard, he said, don't bother me and the door is already locked. He knocked. He knocked and knocked. Well, this is just a metaphor, but I hope that it's clear to us that when we really are serious on the things that we ask for, it would take courage and boldness to ask our Father for our needs. And as promised, he will open the door for you. Then we will understand the things that are happening to us. And it will give us peace of mind. He promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So don't let your hearts be troubled, brothers and sisters. He got your back. First Thessalonians. 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. Very simple verse that says, pray often. Therefore, whatever form of prayer 
that you are asking, you may expect that it will succeed. But in each case, according to your faith, it will be done to you. Though each is considered separate, it is doubtless that if we combine the three, we would get the combined reply. But some scholars suggest that if we exercise only one of these three forms of prayer, we will still get what our souls seek after. There are some limitations though. We need to understand the limitations of this truth that God answers all prayers which we could consider by just ordinary common sense and which are written in the scriptures. Not anyone with a lack of respect or in a playful or mischievous manner or just pretend that to ask God get what he asked for. It is not every foolish, petty, unconsidered an unappreciated request of an unrepentant heart that God will answer. James 4.3 says, when you ask, you do not receive. Why? Because you ask the wrong motive that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. If we ask that we may consume the good things on our lust, we will not have them. Or if we ask for what it would not be good for us, we will not receive what we ask for. But except for these things, the statement of our Lord has no other qualification. Everyone that's asked, receive. Something here to think about. Can't help put it there. Psalms 37 4 says, Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Something to do. God gives the desires of your heart but He does not give your heart's desire. Again, God gives you the desires of your heart. He does not give you your heart's desire. Now, take a note on this one. How about those wicked and the ungodly who have asked God and they receive? Often in the time of their distress, they have called God and He answered them. Some say that this is simply not true. God that, that answers the prayers of the unbelievers and, or the ungodly. But the scripture says he does. In a minute. Does the Bible contradict itself? No. Surely not. Remember Ahab, king of Israel, committed great idolatry in front of, of God with his wife Jezebel. First King 21 and 29. God said, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me. Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days. How about Jeho Ahaz, son of Jehu, who did evil in the sight of the Lord? 2 Kings 13 4. Then Jehu Ahaz sought the favor of our Lord, and the Lord listened to him. About Nineveh, Jonah 3 10. By the preaching of Jonah, the people of Nineveh turned from their evil ways. God said, When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented on the disasters that He said He would do to them. And He did not do it. You remember the parable of the Pharisees and the tax collector. The proud prayer of the Pharisee compared to the repentant heart of the tax collector. 
for he can't even look up in heaven, but he beat his chest saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He found favor in the eyes of God. So many times in the hour of sickness and in times of trouble, God has heard the prayers of the unthankful and the evil. Do you think God gives nothing except to the righteous? What were you when you began to pray? Were you good and righteous? Not me. Has that commanded you to do good to those who are evil? It says, I say to you, have your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is words. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rains, rain on the just and on the unjust. This is one of the glories of God's grace, brothers and sisters. When there is nothing else good in the man, yet if there is a cry lifted from his heart, the Lord often agrees to send relief from trouble. Now, if God has heard the prayers of the evil and the, God and the, and the ungodly man, will he not hear you when you are humbling yourself in his sight and desiring to be reconciled to him? Going back to our main point this morning, with regard to real and spiritual prayer, that everyone that asks receives, and who he seeks finds, and to him that knocks, the door will be open. The promise is there. Everyone. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. And keep on knocking. Meaning, come to the Lord often. Come boldly. Do not be reluctant. Don't be hesitant. Don't be shy. If the situation intensifies, come with intensity. It says, if the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Come with a clean heart and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. For the prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. As Paul wrote to the people of Galatia, of, of uh, uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In conclusion, Jesus' own words again. I will repeat it. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. Have you been asking the Lord for something that you really need in your life? It's just that you increase your faith, for He is always faithful. Have you been seeking His presence for His guidance and direction? Seek the Lord for him. There is hope. And have you been knocking on his door? Do not waver. For he was, he is always there to open the door for you. Because he loves you. For those who have not accepted the gospel of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now is the time for you to decide. Do not delay anymore. God's plan of salvation is that you heard the gospel, you must believe. That will lead you to your repentance for the forgiveness of your sins and confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and be baptized and remain faithful till death. And now it is his turn. He is asking you to come to him. Those who are weary and heavy laden and he will give you peace and rest. He came to this world to seek and to save the lost. He is standing at the door of your heart and knocking. And if you hear his voice, open the door. And he will come to you. There are prayers that you need for us to pray for you today. Let them be known. So we can all pray together. The Lord is inviting you to come now. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And as we stand, as Brother Carlos, lead us for our invitation song.